Let's go to Amos 2 verse 5, right? Where God says, So I will send fire upon Judah, and it will consume the citadels of Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the city of God. Jesus loved Jerusalem. This is the place where he chose that the temple would be, be built that contained the Holy of Holies, the tabernacle, you know, his name, where his name would dwell. The center of the universe. The center of the universe. And yet here he's saying, I will send fire upon Judah and it will consume the citadels of Jerusalem. You know why? It's refiner's fire, baby. That's right. It's either, it's either, it's either going to be cleansing fire or destructive fire. Yes. So it's going to consume, you know, okay? General William Booth, uh, you know of William Booth, right? The founder of the Salvation Army back in the late 1800s. In 1878, he wrote a wonderful old hymn entitled, Send the Fire. Oh, yeah. We've actually used that in some of the Bible bites. A, a friend of mine, a pastor up in Canada, who was in the Salvation Army, sang that song, Send the Fire. Yeah. So he was talking about the fire of the Holy Ghost, Booth was, when he wrote that song. Mm -hmm. As on the day of Pentecost, when brothers and sisters were gathered in one place and in one mind seeking the Lord. That is not what the Lord is speaking about here through Amos. It's like the choices that I spoke of earlier. All people will experience the fire of God. Get that straight. Right. All people will experience the fire of God. Either of destruction, as this verse foretells, or of the wonderful, mighty presence of our God, a loving God. So it's all about choice. Because it says in Hebrews 12, starting at 28, Therefore, since we receive a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us show gratitude by which we may offer to God an acceptable service with reverence and awe. For our God is a consuming fire. So this prophetic word from Amos was fulfilled about Judah. It was fulfilled not terribly long after. When concerning Judah and Jerusalem, I'm going to read to you now from Jeremiah. It says, Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, because you have not obeyed my words, behold, I will send and take all the families of the north, declares the Lord, and I will send to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, my servant, and will bring them against this land and against its inhabitants and against all these nations round about, and I will utterly destroy them and make them a horror and a hissing and an everlasting desolation. desolation. Jeremiah 25, 8 and 9. Mm. This is God. This is God. But he doesn't bring to destroy. He brings to cleanse. But it's up to everybody to make the choice of whether it will be a destructive fire or a cleansing fire. Neither nations or individuals can disobey the sovereign Lord God without penalty or consequence. And there is only one way that the penalty and the consequence has any hope of being avoided. When John came forth to prepare the way of the Lord, he said, it's, or it says in Matthew 3, Now in those days John the Baptist came preaching the wilderness, in the wilderness of Judea, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. When Jesus came forth from the wilderness, remember being tempted by the, by the mm -hmm. devil, right? He started by saying, From that time Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Matthew 4.17 when Jesus spoke in the, in the last days, the book of Revelation, to the churches, and I just mentioned a few here, to the church at Ephesus, he said, Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, and repent, and do the deeds you did at first. To Pergamum, the church of Pergamum, he said, Repent, therefore, or else I'm coming to you quickly and will make war against them with the sword of my mouth. To Sardis, he said, Remember, therefore, what you have received and heard, and keep it, and repent. And finally, to the church at Laodicea, he said, Those whom I love, I reprove and discipline. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Revelation 3.19. I just want to tell you, and I said this when we started this study, 
There's a difference between teaching and prophecy. Yes. Teaching is good. I mean, God has appointed teachers in the church. Mm -hmm. If I didn't believe in teaching, we wouldn't be doing any of these Bible studies. But the simple matter is, I believe we are coming to that time when, when the focus is prophetic. And the prophetic call is always repent. It's not about, oh, you're going to have a nicer car, a nicer job, a nicer house, a nicer spouse. Mm. No. You know what it is? It is a call to repentance. We need, this, this study has always been about that we examine ourselves. We examine ourselves to see, to test and see that wrong. we are doing what God <clears throat> has called us to do. That our lives are lining up with the teaching of the Word of God. And if they are not, we need to fall on our face and repent and get clear. These are the perilous last days. Not a burning, cleansing flame sendeth the fire. Your blood-bought gift.